Hello everyone and welcome back to Mass Effect. This is part four where last time uh, we explored the Artemis Tau cluster, uh, recruited um, our lovely friend here, Liara to Sony, um, and uh, we did some exploring the galaxy, checked out some side quests, um, all that sort of jazz, and ended up uh, finishing up with Nasana over here who got us to murder her sister. Yay! <laughs> um, the first couple of episodes of the Mass Effect playthrough have now been uh, uploaded and the reception has been great. I've been loving seeing you guys enjoying the fact that I'm picking this up and trying to be as thorough as possible. I uh, do just want to confirm, by the way, that I've known this since the first episode that the dialogue options on the left I know are the optional ones that give you more information and the ones on the right progress the conversation. Uh, I know that. Um, it's mostly just choosing how to balance the the let's play, you know, with I'm actually seeking out dialogue options on the left that I want to know more information about at that point in time. Um, I'm not, I wasn't trying to exhaust every option of dialogue, um, you know, because um, with lots of dialogue, uh, lots of codex being spoken to me, um, I want to make sure that I can provide uh, a good balance between gameplay, dialogue, and lore um, in an episode. Um, it's, a, it's a work in progress, it's a new game, I, uh, it's also a Bioware RPG that I haven't played before, uh, so I'm getting used to how these games are played. Uh, but I do appreciate your, uh, your patience. Um, I've also learnt that in using my skills for these guys, uh, we have to actually be aiming at the enemies, where I had this sort of like, just because it seems a little bit odd, I just thought that you would go, oh yeah, you just press it and then they'll target an enemy and use it, but it's a, it's a misunderstanding. Because um, it goes, temporarily disables enemy biotics and tech within a certain radius, so I was like, cool, if I just go get close to enemies and activate this skill, it'll, you know, that, that sort of stuff. Um, I'm sure overkill is one that you can use without aiming at an enemy, but maybe if it's like, sabotage you have to be aiming at them? I don't know. Uh, but regardless, just some pointers um, for for the playthrough is uh, I'll see I'll see how I go. Uh, like I want to listen to as much dialogue as possible. Uh, that's why I'm going into the the codex as well, and and we're listening to that. Um, I do believe that it is better for me to take codex entries as they come. Otherwise, I will get like overloaded by the end of an episode and have to sit through it for a really extended period of time. Um, so. Take, try to you know take it as the game uh, intends like if the game gives you that codex entry you should read it or listen to it you know so I'm like cool we've got this new information let's find out what this thing is that we've just got um, unless it's like secondary um, codex information um, so what we're intending to do this episode we'll see how we go um, is if we go into our journal uh, in our assignments uh, we might look at doing the uh, Admiral Kahoku's mission um, to go to the research facility run by the Cerberus group. This is another thing I'm working on figuring out and whether like showing things uh, in the playthrough or not if I do um, all of the assignments and I show you all of them or whether it just like shows stuff that's like kind of substantial uh, but obviously we'll show every main mission because that's the main game. It's just a matter of um, you know Picking the right stuff um, to, to show. But I'll, we'll do a couple of assignments. Um, these are ones that are more found, not this one, but these are the ones that are found by exploring the, the galaxy. Um, this one we need to go to uh, the Yangtze system, um, and then on the missing survey team, uh, we need to go to the Antaeus system in the Hades Gamma Cluster. So we might look at those, uh, and we'll be going to Ferros um, as well. Um, now, we do have a couple of primary codex entries um, that were from last episode, uh, so we are going to listen to those now, um, just while we have them, and then we'll jump into jump into that gameplay. I'll head back to the Normandy, and we'll uh, After the death we'll do what we want to do. Maws are subterranean carnivores that spend their entire lives eating, or searching for something to eat. Threshers reproduce via spores that can lie dormant for millennia yet are robust enough to survive prolonged periods in deep space and atmospheric re-entry. As a result, thresher spores appear on many worlds, spread by previous generations of space travelers. The body of a thresher never entirely leaves the ground. Only the head and tentacles erupt from the Earth to attack. 
In addition to physical attacks, threshers have the ability to project toxic chemicals and emit bursts of infrasound as a shockwave weapon. The Alliance first encountered threshers on the colony of Akuz in 2177. After contact was lost with the Pioneer team, Marine units were deployed to investigate. The shore parties were set upon by hungry threshers, and nearly the entire assault force was killed. Alliance forces recommend engaging threshers with vehicle-mounted heavy weapons. Don't fuck with threshers, dude. They're in, they're insane, <laughs> and they wrecked me multiple, multiple times. Bayot, when subjected to an electrical current, the rare material dubbed Element Zero or Ezo emits a dark energy field that raises or lowers the mass of all objects within it. This mass effect is used in countless ways, from generating artificial gravity to manufacturing high-strength construction materials. It is most prominently used to enable faster-than-light space travel. Ezo is generated when solid matter, such as a planet, is affected by the energy of a star going supernova. The material is common in the asteroid debris that orbits neutron stars and pulsars. These are dangerous places to mine, requiring extensive use of robotics, telepresence, and shielding to survive the incredible radiation from the dead star. Only a few major corporations can afford the setup costs required to work these primary sources. Humanity discovered refined element zero at the Prothean Research Station on Mars allowing them to create mass effect fields and develop FTL travel. Nice. Um, another thing that I just wanted to quickly interject about, like the codex and the dialogue and um, getting all of that information is I am also trying to avoid um, an information overload where it just gets to a point where it feels like you're in a classroom and you're falling asleep. Like I don't want to have the, just like an endless amount of information where I'm absorbing some of it, some of it's going in one ear, out the other, or I'm just not even paying attention. That's kind of like why I'm trying to do it in like the codex as it comes. Um, and then in dialogue options, um, I want to actually ask questions that I'm interested in that I'll retain. Um, I, this isn't a 100% playthrough it's a blind first playthrough and uh, the games that I play for the first time on this channel that I really enjoy I fully intend to replay in my own time some games I even have replayed uh, in my own time where I do different things or I can look up other things that I might have missed or didn't do uh, sort of thing so it's not a 100% playthrough so um, I know that when you're like when you see me maybe like skip a dialogue option or two um, that is sort of like, I don't know, it's a, I'm going for the choices that I want information on. I, yeah, I don't want like that information overload because there's, there's a lot, especially in a sci-fi game and especially in an RPG that is very dialogue and information heavy. It's like remembering names of things and species and, and, um, sort of like lore and how technology works. And, and like, it's a lot cause I'm like trying to learn that on the fly and absorb that information. Like I'm still trying to remember each of the alien species names that we're with like Garrus is a Torian Rex I keep forgetting what Rex is the the ones that are that I like their speech patterns that we found that like speak very monotone are the Elcor um the Asari and it's yeah it's like that thing where it's like i'm trying i'm not at a point where i can just like recall it from my from my mind yet you know omni tools are handheld devices that combine a computer microframe sensor analysis pack and manufacturing fabricator versatile and reliable an omni tool can be used to analyze and adjust the functionality of most standard equipment including weapons and armor from a distance the fabrication module can rapidly assemble small three-dimensional objects from common reusable industrial plastics, ceramics, and light alloys. This allows for field repairs and modifications to most standard items, as well as the reuse of salvaged equipment. Omni tools are standard issue for soldiers and first-in colonists. And I will say that I just remembered that Rex is a Krogan. That's it, so Krogan. Um, Krogan. Torian, um, human, I 
think, is there one that starts with an S? The yeah, the Salarians, right? The Turians. Asari, Prothians, In the early Batarians, Elcor, the Geth, Hanar, Keepers, Krogan, Quarians. Quarians is the other one I was thinking, because I was like, Torians? And then there's one that's similar to that in like how it's put together. Quarians and then the Volus. Gotcha. And watch me forget it again. Come. A mass accelerator propels a solid metal slug using precisely controlled electromagnetic attraction and repulsion. The slug is designed to squash or shatter on impact, increasing the energy it transfers to the target. If this were not the case, it would simply punch a hole right through, doing minimal damage. Accelerator design was revolutionized by element zero. A slug lightened by a mass effect field can be accelerated to greater speeds, permitting projectile velocities that were previously unattainable. If accelerated to a high enough velocity, a simple paint chip can impact with the same destructive force as a nuclear weapon. However, mass accelerators produce recoil equal to their impact energy. This is mitigated somewhat by the mass effect fields that rounds are suspended within. But weapon recoil is still the prime limiting factor on slug velocity. I love the amount of detail and like depth they go into to just even explaining like weapon technology and like stuff like that and like you know, you know like healing items and, and all of that stuff. It's uh it's it's insane. It's um it's yeah, it's very deep and I love it. And then even like the secondary stuff that you can read into, um, but unfortunately, as that's not voice acted, um it's a little bit harder to go through. Uh but anyway, um we will resume where we were, uh in the citadel. Uh, we'll head on, head on through. Uh, go back to the Normandy and check out these two, these two side quests. Uh, first of all, um, what I, what I might do quickly while I'm here is apparently talking to Avina can give you a decent amount of uh, lore and stuff, which we did skip over in our Citadel visit. So I might have a check in with her. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal One. There are many points of interest here including the Citadel Embassies and CSEC Headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. Do you know anything about Spectres? The term Spectre is derived from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is hand-picked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the council itself. I think different Avenas must have uh, different, uh, different options as well, potentially. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians, the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community while preserving individual autonomy for each species. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. Again, another thing in terms of dialogue is obviously the blue stuff is like the Paragon and the red stuff is like the Renegade. Um, I'm in. I'm in. I'm putting both charm and intimidate options in because I'm not going one way or the other. Um, when I am presented with dialogue options, I'm picking the choice that I do want to make. You know, like when I see like that there's blue and red, um, they're definitely appealing options, and I there is a part of me that's leading towards them. Um, but if there's options over the right hand side uh, that I'd like to do instead, like I will, I will choose those. I'm not going to feel pushed in one direction. Um, s sort of thing. Like I, I am choosing the options that I, that I, that I want to, and that's why I'm not going all into charm or all into intimidate. Uh, I want to open up uh, both pathways uh, if possible, because sometimes, sometimes you can't be the nice guy. You know, sometimes you got to be a bit of a renegade. But you know, we'll see how we'll see how we go. Goodbye. 
Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. So if I check the map, um, there is another Avena here, and another Avena over there. Um, so I just want to see... I would like to see if this one, because I believe when we spoke to this one last time, it gave us information on the Krogan statue. Krogan. Turian. On the bridge is Salarian. And then, what's the name of the... What is the name of... Hang on, primary. Quarians. Yeah, I'm going Torians, uh, Quarians, Salarians, Krogan, Geth, Hanar. <laughs> just gotta, just gotta, sorry, just gotta keep them in my head. Um, also, I, I really, I'm fine and happy uh, with my choice to pick uh, the soldier uh, Jane Shepard. Like, I'm, I'm so fine with my choice. Uh, I get that there was more customizational options, uh, which again, uh, something that I'll probably do on a replay is I will mess around with that more. But uh, I have no issues playing as the soldier class, and then I like having my other uh, peop my people in the squad balance that out, sort of, sort of thing. Jennifer Hale is also amazing. Uh, I love her voice. Um, so she's fine to me. Uh, some people have mentioned like Mass Effect characters like Eyes, um, which is uh, I can't I can't get a. I'm trying to see if I can like the Mass Effect characters Eyes. I I I can understand because um, it is a remaster of the first game. Uh, but something that I do like um, about these characters um, and the eyes, even though the eyes can look a bit like lifeless and nothing's going on in dialogue, is like there's there's subtle eye movements there. Like the the eye like darts across to different directions, and it like it doesn't stay in the same place. Like the the head is moving, there's there's blinking. Like the eyes are like looking off, but then they're like like they're moving around, like which is really impressive. Like um, anim animations, like you notice that especially on like the close ups. Um, it's just. There is like that part where they're hyper focused on things that they're they're, they're staring at. Um, they do stand out a bit, but I think like like look at this like the way that she like looks at stuff and how her how her eyes are moving like it looks it looks great. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal Three. Here in the financial district, a number of businesses offer various goods and services to their exclusive clientele. The statue you see before you was commissioned to honor the Krogan soldiers who gave their lives to protect Citadel space during the Rachni Wars. In the aftermath of the Krogan rebellions, several embassies petitioned to have the statue removed. However, this motion was eventually quashed by the Council. What were the Rachni Wars? Nearly 2200 years ago, Explorers seeking to expand Citadel space opened up mass relays leading to systems controlled by the Rachni. A highly intelligent and aggressive insect race, the Rachni unleashed a war of conquest against the rest of the galaxy that lasted for nearly three centuries. The emergence of the Krogan finally turned the tide in favor of the Citadel species. Krogan forces provided the numbers necessary to halt the Rachni advance and drive them back. The Krogan then pursued their retreating fleets. Able to survive the harsh environments of the Rachni homeworlds, the Krogan hunted their enemy to extinction. Wild. Was it really necessary to wipe them out? I am sorry, <laughs> but a value judgment of that nature goes beyond my programming. Her, like, her eyes, how they're, like, eyeballs, but they're, like, orange and, like, highlighted. It's like, ugh, it's creepy. Why did the Council fight so hard to keep the statue? The Krogan were instrumental in saving the galaxy from the Rachni threat. The Council believed this historical fact should not be forgotten. The Council also hoped that preserving the memorial would improve diplomatic relations with the Krogan and bring about a peaceful resolution to the rebellions. Unfortunately, the Krogan refused to negotiate, and only surrendered after their population and homeworlds had been ravaged by the Turians. Not gonna say that. Tell me more about the Krogan rebellions. 
In recognition of their efforts during the Rachni Wars, the Krogan were granted several new colony worlds by the Council. Over the next 400 years, the Krogan species began to expand. Blessed with an extremely high birth rate, their numbers began to swell. Faced with a critical overpopulation crisis, the Krogan started a violent colonization of nearby worlds inhabited by other Council species. The Krogan rebellions had begun. For a full century, the Council and its member species fought to bring the Krogan under control. With the aid of the newly discovered Turian Empire, they were ultimately successful. You needed the Krogan to stop the Rachni, then you needed the Turians to stop the Krogan. So who's going to stop the Turians? I am sorry, <laughs> but that question is beyond my programming parameters. The Turians are members of the Citadel Council. They are not a threat to galactic peace. Sorry, Garrus. Didn't mean to offend you with that statement. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. Cool. And what I noticed there is that I got an achievement that popped up um, that once I asked about the Rachni Wars, I did get another codex entry uh, in relation to extinct races. Um, so it does, like, getting those dialogue options do lead to more codex things as well. So there's... If you want more codex, you got to get more dialogue, get more lore. <laughs> Cause and effect. Fifth, though now extinct, the Rachni once threatened every species in Citadel space. Over 2,000 years ago, explorers foolishly opened a mass relay to a previously unknown system and encountered something never seen before or since, a species of spacefaring insects guided by a hive mind intelligence. Unfortunately, the Rachni were not peaceful, and the galaxy was plunged into a series of conflicts known as the Rachni Wars. Attempts to negotiate were futile, as it was impossible to make contact with the Hive Queens that guided the race from beneath the surface of their toxic home world. The emergence of the Krogan ended the Rachni Wars. Bred to survive the harshest environments, the Krogan were able to strike at the Queens in their lairs and reclaim conquered Council worlds. But when Krogan fleets pressed them back to their homeworld, the Rachni refused to surrender, and the Krogan eradicated them from the galaxy. Nice. Uh, also, another point is now that we've actually spoken, we spoke to uh, to Rex um, last episode. He was talking about how you know the Krogan race is kind of dwindling uh, quite a little bit. So it's interesting to see how there was like such a harsh, like there was such a big boom of Krogan, and then there was the rebellion. Turians put them all down, and now. Uh, Rex is like, yeah, there's not, meant, not much of us left anymore. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we'll run over and we'll check the... Got a moment, Spectre? Hello, Spectre. I have a business proposition for you. How did you know I'm a Spectre? Word travels. Your name comes up in certain circles. I'm acquainted with a pair of powerful crime bosses. They're hiding on remote worlds, and I have the coordinates. You could do the galaxy a favor. And what do you get out of this? We share interests in certain cooperative ventures. But their business practices have forced me to terminate our relationship. Once they are dead, I will manage our organization in a more tasteful manner. This is an obvious setup. I could see this being a setup. Like, oh, we'll try and get this Spectre to do like this thing for me. We'll go check out the, uh, go kill these crime bosses. You're obviously with them. Why don't I just arrest you instead? Arrested for what? You and I are simply having a conversation. Oh, she's coy. I have excellent legal representation. Arresting me would be a waste of your time. Interesting. I eliminate them and then you take over and try to eliminate me. How stupid do I look? While I appreciate your estimation of my bravado, I have no intention of attempting to murder you. You are the first human specter, and you are doing important work for humanity. I have no interest in red sand or slavery. Anyone who does deserves to die. Our needs are aligned. 
Okay. All right. You, you, you're convincing me. You're convincing me here. What kind of defenses would these two have? I haven't the faintest idea, but they're certain to be armed. Their partnership soured, and each believes that the other intends to kill him. They will be well prepared. What crimes did these men commit? They're red sand dealers who make victims of their customers. Those who can no longer pay are sold to Batarians as slaves. They're loathsome, hurting innocent people. They must be ended. Alright, I gotcha. I gotcha. If they're as bad as you say they are, they need to be dealt with. Excellent. Here are the coordinates. When these men are dead, I will wait for you at the third set of coordinates. Goodbye, Commander. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Cool. I'll see you at the third set of coordinates. If you decide to fucking murder me or not, we'll just have to see how we go. Cool. So, running a... Oh, and here's Balavon in here. Which, um... Yeah, I remember that. So you can just be like walking through and someone's like, got a moment, my guy? Who are you to tell me what my husband would want? I'm the only person making sense right now. You're endangering your baby. This baby is the only thing I have left of Jake. That sounds like a that sounds like a petty human squabble. I'm not getting involved. I've got more important matters to take to you, like fucking saving the galaxy, man. I don't care about someone's baby. Yes, I'm aware that there are side quests all over the place. It's not a not a 100% playthrough. Oh yeah, we got this dude a permit, didn't we? That's why he's here. Not a 100% playthrough. If I see a side quest and it doesn't appeal to me, we know what's up. I'm pretty sure we already spoke to this one quite a bit because we got information on the keepers, Welcome right? To For your convenience, this terminal is programmed with information on the tower, the relay monument, and the keepers. Tell me more about the relay monument. Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the relay monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity? A Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here to the Citadel. No one can say for sure, making the relay monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the Council Chambers and Citadel Control, the tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels. When they're talking about, like, when earlier when they were talking about how that something happened like 2,000 years ago like with the Rachni Wars it's so weird when it's just like that's like like the year 100 and something <laughs> like or the year 100 or year 200 for like humanity it's like so weird when it's just like talking about, oh yeah all these things happened like thousands of years ago when humans didn't even know uh, that the earth did not revolve around um you know, that everything didn't revolve, uh, revolve around the Earth, but... <laughs> I'd like to hear more about the Council Chambers. The business of the Council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel Tower. The Council Chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold, though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the counselors, ambassadors, and high-ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. Yeah, of course you've seen it. What if someone has business with the council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. Even then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizen. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. 
Have a pleasant day. I think the lore that interests me the most um, that we've gathered from this game. Is this this lady? There was, oh no. It's a younger version. Um, what I what interests me most lore wise about this game, I think, is like uh, certainly like the the history of things that have taken place um, and the the species that are in the game as well. Um, I think that's what that's what definitely appeals to me more than anything is like learning about the actual species and the the history of events. Um, probably like learning about like oh this is the Citadel Tower and they monitor air traffic is uh, not as appealing to me because it's kind of like pretty like clear standard information but like learning about uh, learning about specific species is really cool stuff like that uh, that I really like uh, we'll go down to CSEC so we can get out of here so we can leave now that you have experienced a Spectre's life firsthand, Garrus, do you regret leaving your security position? Fighting a rogue Spectre with countless lives at stake and no regulations to get in the way? I'd say that beats CSEC. I am unsure how the imminent destruction of all organic life beats anything, but your enthusiasm is comforting nonetheless. I like that they have a conversation. It's not just like um, that dude is just speaking about news stories. Um, but they can actually have uh, conversations between each other. I wonder if that really depends on who you're pairing characters with. It it has to, so you can only have that conversation if you've got these two together. With all this exploration of Prothean culture, this must be like a survey for you, Liara. Our travels now are somewhat different from my normal excavations. I would prefer lengthier studies and fewer explosions. The loss of all this Prothean technology is just one more thing Saren will have to pay for. I wonder if Shepard will interact in any of these conversations, or if Shepard will say anything. But again, that ties back to something that I've spoken about earlier, that roaming character dialogue is a bit limited in like an RPG game because you're not able to pick your dialogue options when it's happening in a game that's so set on you picking and choosing exactly what you have to say. So there's moments like this where your character says nothing. Um, but this is interesting because I haven't had the characters speak to each other yet. But Garrus and Liara have two conversations in a row, uh, which is which is very interesting. Uh, Rex didn't have anything to say when we had him in the squad. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. I like I like having Garrus in. Logged. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. Yeah, I like I like having Garrus um, in my squad, but then the the next one can be like I don't mind sort of um, changing it around, like mixing it up and having different people. Now, something that I wish that we could do at the same time um, as being in the galaxy map is being able to check my journal. Because the journal is very specific of, oh, you need to go to this place. So it would be nice if I had that as a reference. Because otherwise I'm kind of needing to just have to remember. Now I know that we can go to the Hades cluster. Um, we can go to the Hades cluster for, Hades Gamma cluster for one of them. But then the Cerberus one... Said so that we had to go to another system. Let's go to the Hades Gamma Costa. Anteus. Dees. Farinata. Alright, I think it was Anteus. So let's get that mass relay going and get the hell out of here. They really, they really love to let this one play, because I think this is a loading screen that's hidden behind a cutscene. You know, they were able to skip the travelling. So they're like, we gotta, we gotta let it load. But then you're instantly there. Okay, now, let's have a look. We can land on Trebin. Edmos we can survey. Oh. 
Unidor, and Ice World. Ploba. And so they. Ploba. Matriarch writings discovered. Nice. Okay. Um, Vamal. Survey this planet as well. Rare element. Deposit of uranium. Nice. Um, let, me, let me jump into Trebin. Um, I'm going to take Garrus with me. As usual. Um, another thing is when we examine the squad, I kind of wish what would pop up is you could check their um, their stats, like what I've allocated things to. I'll chuck Talion. Dropping in the Mako. Okay, now while I'm here and landed, I um, can level up Tali a bit. Um, in the journal, in the assignments, uh, Cerberus. The Yangtze system in the Voyager cluster is where we want to go for that. Um, missing survey team, the Antaeus system. So it says the Antaeus system in the Hades Gamma cluster. So we're in the Antaeus system and we're choosing to land on Trebin. I uh, will then check the map, which has Anomaly and the research base, which is the point of interest. Let's just take a quick little, uh, quick little search over over this way. Head on over to the ruins. There's also something here for us. Also, I probably will cut out a lot of like Marco travel. Uh, in in future when it's just like traveling to these points because it's a lot of you know just driving to a destination um, so it's stuff where over time over time we'll uh, we'll stop including just like travel to places unless I'm obviously got something to, to talk about but for now we'll uh, we'll keep it in it's just a point of not knowing when things are gonna, you know, pop up. Looks like there's an enemy by these ruins. Got a red dot on the map. Ooh. Scavengers, huh? Check their, check their ship out, or well, their vehicle. VT7. Just lead the way. Also, I like having the I like having the combat helmets on when you're out on missions. I don't know. There's just a, there's a sense of realism in that for me, because it would make sense for them to be properly suited up. So I actually kind of like it. One of these days, one of these days, um, I'm going to bring the right person along for the electronics job. Because uh, I keep forgetting who has the electronics skill in my, <laughs> in my team. I genuinely keep forgetting. I'm like, who's got the electronics skill? This is why I wish that you could check that stuff before assigning your squad. But I'll just start. Putting some more electronic skill into into more people in my squad, I think and that'd be great. I really love the ability to just traverse, like just just be like, fuck it, 
we climbing up all of these ridges, no problem. I really like the traversal opportunities you have. Transmitter tower. Discovery. This device is transmitting tight beam signals into geosynchronous orbit. This disrupts the survey team's GPS satellites, causing them to crash nearby. And there's all the crashed ones. That's weird. There you go. That's an anomaly that we've uh, that we've fixed. We've got another one over the other end, and uh, the research base. So I might do the research base first, and then after I do that, we'll uh, we'll check out the uh, the next anomaly. Okay, we got two points of interest here. Two parts of the research base. Same, oops, same vehicle as those scavengers. Okay. Incendiary explosive, nice. I like just the lack of the lack of music uh, when you're on like a planet surface like this, when it's just like, it's so just desolate and it's just the atmospheric sound of the planet. According to these data logs, the survey team unearthed some kind of alien technology. We should check out the excavation site. Could be some answers there. Hurricane 3 and the Reaper 3. Okay. Alright, we'll go check out the other site. Oh, hang on. Okay, let's go have a look down here. Alien technology, huh? Oh, it's one of these. Okay, so that'll take us further in. Let's go. Some enemies coming up. Husks. Oh, dude, we got geth stuff going on. Alright, so let me have a look. If we. So, oh, okay, so I can see that when you highlight it, it targets them. Okay. It makes sense. Robotic enemies? They would be robotic enemies, right? There you go, okay. I can see now. Ah. And now he's on our team. Oh, no, he's not on our team. Oh, they just, yep, they just transform. They get like a weird power up. Shotguns, everyone. Whip them out. The survey team must have unearthed some alien technology that turned them into mindless fanatics. Whatever they found. 
It's long gone now. Fusion containment cell. Shoot the object. This is why I'm not a scientist. <laughs> it looks pretty. Okay. Oh. That was weirdly good timing, but my grenade didn't even do anything. That's a shame. I was like, ah, oh, I accidentally pressed the X button. Going to lose my team. Get back up, everybody. No. Nope. My team goes down really easily. You know? That accounts for all of the Exogeny survey team. They were converted to cybernetic husks by devices similar to those used by the Geth on Eden Prime. How they came to be buried on a frontier world so far from Geth territory is a mystery. Wild. Area secured. Yeah, I, yeah. Thanks. Did Tali just get up and then just die again? Negative contact. It's all good, team. Medigel deployed. You're alive. Nice. Heavy armor for a Krogan. Probably not at this point in time, but... Um, let me have a look at what Garrus is doing. They're doing that. You can have the Avenger 3 now. How about that? Um, and then you can have... Yeah, get that. You take that too. And then... Take that. You can also have that. Just really gotta give you some better stuff, mate. There we go. Uh, let me check Tali. You can have the Avenger. Yes. And then you can also have... Edge. You've got the Avenger. Cool. Helena Blake. Yep, we've got to do that. Where are we? Is it in the completed ones now that we've just done it? No, because it completes in order. We need to be in the Hades Gamma Cluster anyway for this. Fanatical Biotics in the Hades Gamma Cluster have kidnapped the Chairman um, in the Farinata system. So we can do that next as well. Alright, I'll, I'll check out that last point of interest and then we could probably just leave. Alright, what have we here? A point of interest. Oh, fuck. It's another one of you guys. That's great. Just another Thresher more. No biggie. God damn it. Okay. Just hanging out.
Thresher moors are no joke. Why is it not dead? Thank you. Wild. Ancient debris. Turian insignia. Nice. Okay. So you can actually get the Turian insignias uh, while being on the planet. That makes sense. Okay, let's return to the Normandy. Cool. Um, and I did check as well in the journal, because I've rearranged it now, um, is it did get completed, missing survey team. But it doesn't, it's not completed, it doesn't like list the latest one you've completed up the top. Um, but that's fine. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do UNC hostage. Um, so we're in the Hades Gamma Cluster already. So derelict freighter in the Farinata system. Check the galaxy map for the Farinata system. This one. Bit of travel. Bit back and forth. There we go, MSV Ontario. Alright, before we target that ship, let me just survey some planets first. Rare element. Thorium. Ooh, that's pretty. Check that out. Gas giant traces of chlorine and nitrogen in its atmosphere. Look at that. Aurora Borealis. On this planet, in this system, Prothean data disk recovered. Scans of Juntorma revealed a derelict freighter in mid-stage orbital decay. Your salvage team boarded the vessel and determined it had been attacked by raiders. There was little of value still on board, but the team did find a Prothean data disk. All right, and now we go to the MSV Ontario. The Ontario is a Kowloon class modular conveyor of human design configured for mixed freight and passenger hauling. It is making a hard burn for the cover of an asteroid uh, cluster. Cool, we get to board a ship. That's awesome. Um, we're boarding a ship to deal with some hostages. You know what that means? We're taking Rex along with Garrus. And I believe. Mr. Man with 24 points. Let's give you some points because it's been a little while. And some into fitness at this point. There you go. Cool. Now if I go on equipment, let me just check out what I can give you, because he can definitely have some better stuff at this point as well. Might give him I'll give you the Banshee. I'll give you the Storm. Um just think about that heat sink. You can keep the Kessler. Um, in terms of this one. Yeah, keep the Avenger. And I guess we need to get upgraded skills in armor so he can wield. Um, so he can wear heavy armor. Gotcha. Uh, I think we just got a quick codex entry. Let me just quickly check. Mass relays are feats of Prothean engineering advanced far beyond the technology of any living species. They are enormous structures scattered throughout the stars and can create corridors of virtually mass-free space, allowing instantaneous transit between locations separated by years or even centuries of travel using conventional FTL drives. 
Primary mass relays can propel ships thousands of light years, often from one spiral arm of the galaxy to another. However, they have fixed one-to-one -one connections. A primary relay connects to one other primary relay and nowhere else. Secondary relays can only propel ships across a few hundred light years. However, they are omnidirectional. A secondary relay can send a ship to any other relay within its limited range. There are many dormant primary relays whose corresponding twins have not yet been located. These are left inactive until their partner is charted. As established civilizations are unwilling to blindly open a passage that might connect them to a hostile species. Wow, so there's dormant ones because you have to locate another and have them both sort of activated to travel between them. That makes sense. Some people would be like, nah, fuck that, I'm not having anyone come to this relay. Good night, everybody. I think that's another one in the secondary one. The data disks. Cool. Thermal armor for a Turian. Um, hey, Garrus. Um, that does that does just give you better stuff. There you go. You've been upgraded, my friend. Are they going to be hostile to me straight off the bat? I think they are. Intruders! Yep. Kill them. Oh, biotic terrorists, and we've got a limited amount of time to. Uh, I'm. Alright, sir. Just this one dude left. Man, they were pretty gung ho, weren't they? Just keep pressing the X button. Because I'm not used to weapons that are overheating instead of reloading. Alright, we've still got two minutes. I assume we're going to the point of interest. Let's check out the point of interest. See how it is? You write <laughs> letters and everyone ignores you. He was T-posing. The only thing people appreciate. So how about if I kill Chairman Burns and finish this charade? Please, I was trying to help you people. When you open the door and Chairman Bo Burns is T-posing before it actually goes into the scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Calm down. None of these options feel suitable. Calm down never works. Don't be stupid as an insult. Take them down just instantly takes us into combat. Let's not do anything we're all going to regret. Why not? What have we got to lose? Since the chairman here decided that we didn't get reparations, we've got nothing left to live for. But I've changed my mind. Seeing you all, it's, it's clear that you all deserve... You had your chance. Some L2s are nearly crippled from side effects of the implants, but you voted against reparations. I love that don't be stupid then becomes a renegade choice after it was the, the middle choice. Think about this. Burns is the one man who can help you. Yes, if you release me, I can take another look at the reparations request. What, we're supposed to trust you? Sure, you promise us freedom and say everything will be fine, but as soon as we surrender, you'll double-cross us. I'm not promising to let you go. All I'm saying is that Burns will take another look. Right, Burns? 
Absolutely. I had no idea that the L2 biotics were this desperate. If I'd known, the reparations will come. For whatever it's worth, I promise that. You're right. I don't want to die. Maybe something will happen this time. We surrender. Thank you, Commander. I thought I was dead when they took me. I'll see to it that the reparations discussion is reopened. I didn't know they were so desperate. A Fifth Fleet cruiser will be by shortly to pick you and the prisoners up. Oh, that's just, they're all just standing around chilling. Thank you, Commander. I thought I was dead when they took me. I love that they're just like all now like just buddy buddy standing around. I'm like, this dude probably just want to be as far away as possible from these guys. Are we not putting these dudes in handcuffs? Space handcuffs? Put them in binders, baby. All right, I guess we're uh, I guess we're just trusting. We're just trusting that they're all just going to get along now. No, uh, they'll play nice. Lancer four, baby. Lancer four. worse than the Avengers, so maybe not. Maybe I can give it to... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also need to just check about equipment upgrades. Two plus health regeneration. It's pretty cool. I like having my shield battery on though. Give me, give me more shields. Alright, um, everyone leveled up slightly? Cool. Um, in that case... Let's have a look. Give you a bit more fitness and whoop. So now we've unlocked throw. Give me some more health with fitness. Put Garrus in. Give him a bit of that. Um, put some in first aid. Cool. Alrighty. Let's check out this other room now that we're no longer on a time limit. Ooh. In three, huh? Oh, I accidentally pressed X instead of Y. No. Hurricane four into three. More thermal armor. All right, getting some good stuff at this point. Time to leave. All right, we'll go back. I think that's it for the for the Hades Gamma cluster. So if we check. Um, Should probably check into doing Cerberus now. So we'll go to the the Yangtze system in the Voyager cluster, um, and then after that, I'll put the other assignments on hold, um, and we will go to the Ferros system. So we'll finally do finally do another main mission. Thank you for dealing with the hostage situation, Commander. Chairman Burns was quite impressed by the way you resolved the situation peacefully. Your assistance above and beyond the formal duties has been noted, Commander. Fifth fleet out. Nice. Thanks for the thanks for the recognition, my guy. Okay. So we're going to Voyager, which is anywhere, somewhere. One of these places. Oh, it's ne right next door in the Yangtze system. There you go. Let's go! Boom! Mass relays are so cool. I love this technology. It's amazing. Uh, let's survey some new worlds. Prothean data disk again. Patagiri. 
Survey, rare element. Discovered. Trigger. Survey. Light metal. Beryllium. Binthu. We can land on Binthu. And uh, Renchado. Nothing. Close orbiting hot Jupiter with traces of sulfur. Okay. Uh, let's land on Binthu. So, Binthu has an atmosphere of carbon dioxide with a permanent haze of toxic chlorine, um, chlorine uh, and clouds of sulfur dioxide that periodically drop torrents of acidic rain on the surface. Its crust is mainly composed of sulfur with deposits of calcium. Binthu has only been charted within the last 20 years by Alliance surveyors. It has no known native uh, ecology. The data about the world is surprisingly brief and generic, painting a picture of an unple unpleasant and uninteresting place. Let's land on it. Um, now we're on another planet. Now, who was I giving? Was I giving the electronic skill more to? I must have been giving it more to Caden or Liara. So I'm just going to take both of them with me. Just going to take both of them with me. Sorry, guys. I'm taking this Caden dude who thinks that I flirted with him that one time. And I said, no man, I was just being friendly. Uh, squad. No, we put, we've done nothing. We've done nothing with this guy. Because we have not even used him. Um, I like that when people level up, um, you're able to chuck him into these people. Yeah, but it's Liara that's our electronics. It's the Ara that's our electronics lover. Alright, let's give you some stuff then. Medicine. You can be a medicine guy. Barrier. Throw a Mass Effect field. Be our like major healer, dude. So he's also got stasis as well. Wonderful. That's what he's got. So basically, we're just taking Caden along for the ride, and it's also just like, oh, sorry, Caden, why are you why are you here again? <laughs> While he's here, I should probably give him weapons. Level everybody up. So he's not, you know, at a complete disadvantage. Got to do the same with Liara. Make sure that Liara's not just fully left with nothing to do. Um, no. Because the, cause the Sari sort of have the same body. It seems like that they would just wear standard armor. Like, I don't think there would be a sorry armor, they would be able to wear human armor. I assume. Regardless, it looks like we've got three points of interest, an anomaly, and some ruins. Um, so, we're going to run around to the different points on the map and uh, see where we need to go. Okay, we've got our first point of interest out of three. Oh, hang on. We're being, sh we're being shot at. We are being shot at from a distance. There we go. Okay. So this is how we get in. Weird vibes. Hmm. What the fuck? Oh, they're they're Rakno! 
Oh. Cerberus Commander. Oh, I'm almost. I'm gonna die, dude. Can't even really aim at anyone right now, so. When I when we were looking at the codex entry for the Rachni Wars and it showed like an actual um, model for them. I was like, I bet we're going to encounter them. They're apparently extinct, but I was like, oh, I feel like we could probably encounter them because there's a character model. Okay, so... Creates a vortex, allows you to throw enemies, damage enemy shields. Yeah, you do overload. You've eliminated the threat of this facility. Continue to one of the other nearby labs. Dude, they had like just Rachni chilling out. Looks like Cerberus has other bases on this world, Commander. Well, we're certainly not letting Rachni live, are we? Doesn't seem like that's a good idea. Let's move out, team. Alright, we know what to we know what to expect. Bugs and enemies with strong shields that I need to that I need to remember to overload. All right, I've already checked out this point because this was the ruins. Crashed probe. I've checked out this, so we just need to go here and here. Check out this anomaly as well. So let's go here next. Take out the next research lab. All right, next research base. Same interior. <laughs> Pretty much the same interior. Exactly the same. Ooh, hold on. What are they making? Wow. Let's try and let's try and take out the people first. Huddle up. Enemy sighted. Oh man, they really. They really do be wiping you out with that stasis, huh? Is that stasis? I assume it is. Or it's like the throw throw ability. Alright, team, I need you to do overload and sabotage. Go, go, go! That's my favorite two right now. that commando go? Good night, sweet prince. Ooh, more heavy armor. I literally just got new heavy armor, which is why I've just chucked it on. Uh, but we've also got Phoenix. Ah, uh, Phoenix is worse. It gives me a minimal tech biotic protection. Getting the level 4 upgrades now. Alright, what are these? Thorian Creepers. Uh, they look like the husks, but like... Not with the, uh, not with the, you know, uh, the mechanical, like, robotics. There was no sign of Kahoku among the creeper corpses. He must be at one of the other labs in the area. Horrors Cerberus will have waiting for us at the next base. Perimeter secured. Perimeter secured. Thanks, Caden. So, such an exciting guy. Phoenix 5, heavy armor. Still not as good. 
Ooh, and there's a light armor version that gives me more biotic protection. That's cool. Nice. Heavy armor for a Krogan as well, and medium armor. That was Phoenix as well, so it tries to balance it out a little more. Not bad. Not bad. Alright, we'll be on our way to the third and final base, which should have our... Uh, should be the resolution of this mission. Alright, we've got an anomaly around here as well as a point of interest. Ooh. Cool pyramid type deal. Let's just do some long range. Alright, let's check out this guy. Um, Alien Pyramid? Okay. Can we ascend? Interesting. Pro oh, it's a pro right. Prothean Pyramid. Prothean Data Disc. There's a few children's toys and some ragged clothes stuffed inside the top of the monument, along with a Prothean data disc. Wild. Protheans um, inspired the Egyptians to build the pyramids. Confirmed. All those, all those years ago. I mean, if that's a Prothean pyramid, it's got to have been some influence left on humanity there, right? Maybe. Seems to, seems to be the case. Uh, what's the deal with that sniper rifle? Yeah, Avenger. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Let's use that new one. I like it. I like it. Not bothering to upgrade Caden all that much because I'm not planning to really use him all that much either. Oh fuck. That's what we saw in the image. Oh, and there's dead body. Well, we know what's happening here. No, stop it. Well, that just instantly took him out, using that ability. Oh, you think you're tough, huh? Eat my radioactive rounds, dude. Okay, try and throw this guy and see what happens. <laughs> Amazing, they're just like running towards you and you're like, oh, no, I'll see you later. Good stuff. Alright, now we've just got a big boy. Big boy Arachne soldier. Rear Admiral Kahoku. Check for a pulse but find none. Admiral Kahoku is dead. Despite the ferocity of the creatures he was sealed in with, there are no signs of trauma on his corpse. The needle marks on his arm suggest a different means of execution. Oh, goddess. It's Admiral Kohoku. Cerberus must have tracked him down. Rip. Alright. Well, that's, uh... That's that mission completed, I believe. Um, let me chuck some points into fitness. And I do want to start getting to shotguns, but 
There you go. We've unlocked sniper rifles. Um, Caden. And Liara. Let's just max out your electronics. Why don't, why don't we? Katana 4. Turian light armor. Cryo rounds. That'll be cool. Tsunami does more damage, less heat sink, but better accuracy too. I'll take that. We'll give that a give that a try. Looking good. Oh, it's a three shot burst as well. Cool. Wonderful. Okay, if we check the journal. Cerberus has been conducting illegal genetic research in an effort to create an unstoppable army. You found Kahoku dead in one of their bases, and now you're the only one who can stop them. Ah, they want us to destroy the main Cerberus facility, head to Neferon in the Columbia system on the, in the Voyager cluster, and destroy it. Uh, because this seems semi it's directly related to this mission that we've just completed to find Admiral Kohoku. Um, let's, let's do that. We'll go into that, because we're in the same system. And then, no matter what, Ferros will be completed. Um, obviously, if you've probably noticed, based on the past couple of episodes of, um, of Mass Effect, is I am very much enjoying uh, doing longer episodes, and they will probably remain longer episodes, just because of how much content and dialogue exploration is like in the game um so long episodes i'm actually really enjoying with um with mass effect for sure um now um, commander urgent message from alliance command coming in i'll patch it through shepherd this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here, and you're the only one that can handle it. I'm the only one, huh? What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail-safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Classic human move when humans just like, look, you may be a specter and above everybody now, but you're actually still a human, so you actually have to do this. You're, you're part of the Alliance military. Come on, Shepard. You have to do this because I'm asking it of you because you're a human. Rare element surveyed. Can land on Nefiron, Klegia. Uh, okay, what else we got? And one more out here, Gromar. She can also survey. Medallion recovered. Scans of the planet Gromar revealed a derelict space station in late stages of orbital decay. A small team is able to recover some items of interest. Among them, a League of One medallion. All right. Um, let me just. For a second, check the journal. A rogue VI has taken over an alliance training ground located on Earth's moon. 
Located on Earth's moon. Alliance Command needs you to eliminate the VI. We get to go to we get to go to the moon, baby. I actually I'm excited. Um so head to Nefiron, yeah, that's where we want to land. We do want to be landing there. Uh, we've got a secondary one. Cool. That's fine. That's awesome. We're going to the moon! We're going to do that after Ferros, though. And a Pharon, let's land on it. Let's destroy this, uh, destroy this Cerberus base once and for all. Um, Liara for the electronic skill and Garrus, please. Thank you. You want any probes salvaged? Liara is your guy. Ooh, all right, new terrain. Let's level up Garrus a bit. Um, I'm going to put more decryption. More decryption. And then one in terrain agent. Okay, um, let's check the map. So, anomaly, plot point, debris. All right, I'm gonna mine the minerals in front of me and then we'll go check out the anomaly first. Careful not to run over the dead body. Mummified Salarian. It's the second one of these that we've found before. Another ID tag. This Cerberus soldier had an identification tag for Captain Varsynth, one of the Salarian soldiers responsible for capturing the League of One. It's unclear how he came into possession of this relic. Alright, that's that sorted. Uh, we are close by the plot point and there's some ruins. Uh, which I can already see there's enemy signatures nearby. Whee! There we go. Oh. Cerberus anti tank, huh? Anti tank, huh? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Just got eviscerated. They tried. They tried. Okay. Same same similar structure. Shield modulator four. I need that because I'm currently dealing with. I have shield modul shield battery. Give me a shield modulator. Um. Oh yeah, I can put light armor on. Cool, awesome. Uh, you can have the light armor, and she does wear human stuff. Q. I will give you more shields too. Um, Garrus. Yes. Fancy. Um, I'll also give you... Oh, he can probably... He can probably keep what he has. That is fine, but new... Armor is always good. Especially for my boy Garrus. There we go. God, all the server snipers. Boom! Sabotage. I used overload on that person. Oops. Wrong person. Once you really get into like the swing of things with combat, um, it's it's really cool. Okay, 
Okay, so that puts them in stasis where they're frozen, and then they can't do anything, and you can't do damage to them again. Okay. So that's stasis. It's good to know. Yeah, once you get into the swing of swing of things with aiming at someone and using an ability, it's really cool. Sir, uh, I'm afraid we are going to. Uh, Nice. Just do a bit of that. Okay, we proceed further into the... Proceed further into the base. Incendiary Explosive number 5, I'll take it, considering that I literally just upgraded I've got 3. Fusion Explosive, Toxic Damage. I'll keep Incendiary on. Do the other teammates have grenades? They've got like biotic stuff. That's interesting. What does Garrus have? He's got the Omni Tool. Tech cooldown bonus. Yeah, okay. I'll give you that. It's probably something I should have been looking into that I forgot about. Oops. <laughs> Let me try again, please. I can do it. No, I thought it would start with X. I got this, I promise. Unity Amp 4, Phoenix number 3. Getting good stuff. Um, could probably sell some things as well. We're sitting on a lot of money right now because I have not been buying stuff at all. So, probably sell some things, but then I can also um, probably get some good, um, Good pieces of equipment. Maybe back on the Normandy with that dude who's like selling stuff, or even um, that other shop. Considering that that Asari that we spoke to will put us said that should put us on a list for things as well, so we can actually um, said should put us on a list. Why won't it equip the? There we go. Stay with this one. Hello? Everybody's here, just a terminal. Cool, let's blow the place up. You cautiously press a few buttons and an alarm chimes. The optical database is flashing itself. Quickly, you copy as many files as you can onto your hard suit's internal computer. It's memory wiped, the computer shuts down, the files are sure to be encrypted, but you've got time to crack them. Nice. Beep. Alright. However, the plot point is still here. Okay. We completed the mission. I guess just the plot point is just sh still showing there for whatever reason. That's fine. Just want to make sure that I haven't missed anything, but I think we're fine, considering it was like, we've got plenty of time to decrypt them. In our own time. But the mission's definitely completed, which means what we can what we can now have a great time doing is, uh, is going back to Normandy and going to Ferros and finally pushing forward with with a main mission. But these like these side side missions, like these little side adventures, like they're they're fun and exciting and I'm genuinely keen for the one where we get to go uh, to the moon. That's gonna be great. Uh, I'm gonna check out the debris. Uh, we'll head 
back to the Normandy um, and then go on with our main mission. Transmission coming in, Commander. I think you're going to want to hear this one. Greetings, Commander Shepard. I represent a party interested in obtaining information on Cerberus activities. What's your name, sir? Who are you, and who do you represent? Who I am is inconsequential. Suffice to say, I am an agent for the Shadow Broker. You see, Admiral Kahoku contacted my employer looking for information on the location of any Cerberus facilities. We provided that information on the promise that he would turn over copies of all files gathered from the Cerberus systems to us. We provided that information on the promise he would turn over copies of all files gathered. Did you have anything to do with Admiral Kahoku ending up dead? We had no reason to harm him. He was going to provide us with information about Cerberus. Information that is now in your possession. You must have some connection to Cerberus. How else could you tell Kahoku where to find them? Information is our business, Commander. Through our contacts, we were able to determine that the Cerberus group was active in the Voyager cluster. Unfortunately, that was all we were able to find out. That is why we are so interested in acquiring copies of the files from you. Your deal died with Kahoku. Why should I help you? The Alliance is just going to file this information away in some archive. No secret stays hidden forever. Eventually, someone somewhere will deliver it into our hands. Might as well be you. Transmit the files to us and you will be well compensated. What are you going to do with this information? Information is a commodity. It can be bought, sold, or traded. Why my employer desires this information is not my concern. I am only the buyer. My loyalty is to the Alliance, not the Shadow Broker. That is unfortunate, Commander. My employer will remember this the next time you need something from us. Mm. This is the really interesting part about one interaction based on like you know you've completed a side quest there's like one interaction where depending on what you do and how you go about it it's like man is that going to have any long-standing consequences in the future or is that actually going to change change anything like if i you know it's it's very interesting to be like if you if you take a side the others the that other side that you don't take will be affected type deal um so they're like well remember this next time you need something from us bitch curious um i'm interested to see um what will be going on there in relation to um the choice that the choices that we have made but alas uh we're going to the attican beta cluster going to the pharos system Ooh, that's pretty green Let's go to Pharos. Theseus. Travel to another system. Take me there, baby! That dude was like, yeah, I just work for Power Broker. I'm not going to give you any information, though. But, but trust me, bro. Trust me. Give me the information. It's fine. I'm like, nah. It's not the right thing to do, man. Doesn't It didn't feel good to me. Felt sus. Light metal of cobalt. Look at these planets. These two planets are very close together. That would be so cool. Like when this planet and this planet like get close together. I wonder what would happen there when those two planets, because they are very close. Be a very interesting, interesting little little skybox that's kind of like why i wish like on earth imagine how cool it would be if we had like one of those like a planet that was closer and it was like man look at that planet instead we have like the moon just like this and right, let's land on ferris Ooh, that's pretty Towers in the Clouds. The Exogeny Corporation has founded a pilot colony on Pharos to explore the Prothean ruins that blanket two-thirds of the planet's landmass. The atmosphere is fouled with dust. Terrestrial travel is hampered by crumbled debris dozens of meters deep. There are indications that Pharos was a much colder world in the past. Pharos has two large moons, Orkin, the father, and uh, Varde, or Vardet. 
let's land on that planet. Take me to Theros. Get back in the dialogue game. Sweet. Heat load monitor examine. We haven't spoken to Navigator Presley in a while. Yes, Commander? How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school, following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were at Elysium during the Scillian Blitz. A massive fleet of alien raiders hit the colony, trying to wipe it out. They had the numbers, but their ships were no match for an Alliance frigate. It was a slaughter. We couldn't even keep track of how many ships they lost. How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. Captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. I trust you, Commander. If you think they belong here, then so do I. That's my boy, Presley. Oh, Presley. Yes, ma'am. Gave him the chance to speak freely, and that man said, Hell yeah, dude. Aliens, love them. I trust you. That's good. Ashley? Ah ah. Ah ah. No dice. Don't like it. Commander, something you need? I haven't spoken to Joker in a while. He hasn't really done anything. How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. <laughs> okay. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. Whoa! <laughs> Are you contagious? I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Vrolic syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic, but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bone. Why does everyone call you Joker? What do you think? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, and it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. I need to know more about this Rolex syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures, hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. I have to go. All right, see ya. All right, see ya. <laughs> Some of the dialogue just feels very like grounded and real, like actual proper conversations, which is which is nice. 
All right, team, let's go. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. Okay. Pharos, baby. David Al Talakwani. We saw your ship. Fight Dan wants to speak with you immediately. Who's Fight Dan? He's our leader. He needs your help to prepare for the Geth. They are making another push. Please, up the stairs past the freighter. Oh! Holy shit! He just fucking came out of nowhere, dude. Jesus. Why don't I have a sniper on anyway? Oh my god. Oh, this is a semi auto rifle as well. Okay. Nice. Nice and accurate, actually. I, I really like that. I really like the semi auto instead of just like spraying from a distance because I shoot. I shoot assault rifles in controlled bursts anyway. So this works out perfectly for me. Die. Man, didn't even have a chance to save that dude. hit kill to the head. When they're, when they're jumping everywhere, I, I do not have the ability to tackle them. to say. David Reynolds. You good? I fear the Geth will kill us all. This work must be completed. The Geth can't be allowed it. This work must be completed. They're coming. They Stop the Geth. Okay, guess our dude that we want to talk to is inside. Alright, let's do that. Let's go inside first. Freighter crane controls. I guess we'll probably get a brief introduction to that at some point. Alright, hello Devin Reynolds. The Geth are mounting another attack. It's good to know. Cargo logs. While decrypting these logs, you found something suspicious. Several months' worth of human rations were delivered to an uncharted world in the Voyager cluster. The logs aren't clear, but it appears they may have been dropped off somewhere in the Amazon system. Another assignment. Another assignment! Perfect for me. The North ship mobility dominates space combat. The primary objective is to align the mass accelerator along the bow with the opposing vessel's broadside. Battles typically play out as artillery duels, fought at ranges measured in thousands of kilometers. Though assaults wow. from defended mass relays often occur at knife fight ranges, as close as a few dozen kilometers. Most ship-to-ship -ship engagements are skirmishes between patrol vessels of cruiser weight and below, with dreadnoughts and carriers only deployed in full-scale fleet actions. Battles in open space are short and often inconclusive, as the weaker opponent typically disengages. Once a ship enters FTL flight, the combat is effectively over. There are no sensors capable of tracking them or weapons capable of damaging them. The only way to guarantee an enemy will stand and fight 
is to attack a location they have a vested interest in, such as a settled world or a strategically important mass relay. Are we going to have space combat, like, in the game? Are we going to be flying around the, the Normandy? Or participate in, like, a space battle? Space combat, combat endurance. I don't know, we're getting, like, we're getting space combat codex entries. I'm wondering if that means that we can, um... I'm wondering if that means that we can, uh, engage in, uh... Space combat. The logs for the freighter and Ferros. Yep, so that's the Voyager cluster. And there's the moon. I'll leave those unread so I can remind myself to do those. Obviously, I can just sort by newest received and it has the same impact. My headaches are getting better. I just have to stop thinking about the past. Hello, Offworlder. I'm glad that we are totally forgotten by the rest of the galaxy. Dear, please try to rest. You're, you're not ready to speak. But they should know... Uh... Yes. That's better. She cut off her own dialogue because for some reason she didn't speak. <laughs> it was like a delay. Oh my god. He just always has like a... Are you contagious? I hope you're not contagious. Is there anything I can do for you? I'm fine. I just need to try to think clearly. It's just a lingering pain from... from the last attack. I'll be... I can't see any significant damage, but something is clearly causing her pain. Please, just let her rest. She just needs rest. Yeah, she can't even finish her own sentences, dude. Can't even finish her own sentences. Oh, okay. We're just out on the other side. Cool. Let's fight in. Huh, Commander. I'm glad they finally sent somebody to help us. You're a bit late, aren't you? Arcelia. Sorry, Commander. Everyone's on edge since... Watch out! We've got Gath in the tower! Protect the heart of the colony! So you're a bit late, aren't you? I was like, yeah, we're kind of just fucking around in space. We're just fucking around in space. Is that cool with you? We're just, you know, having a, having a... Briefly, you'll greatly increase your armor's protection. Nice. Sabotage. Nice. Yeah, like, we're, you know, fucking around with some Cerberus people, guys. It's fine. Chill out. We've got Geth in the tower! Protect the heart of the colony! What's with the... What's with the lights? It's like the Geth eye... It's like the Geth eye thing. Oh, they just disappeared. It's like the Geth's eyes. Yeah, look at this. What's going on? Their... Their eye effect is still lingering. It's weird. It disappears when I move past it. Death Sniper who? What is this? What's this green shit that's happening? Oh! He's a bit stronger than the others. I was like, yeah, I'll just melee him to death. Is stronger. Mm. Update Fidan and get a vehicle safely out of the Normandy. The Geth base.
This is our next objective. Ah, uh, so we're gonna get hop into the hop into the Mako, go on a drive. Is that right? All right. Um, at this point, at this point, um, let's just put some points into pistols. Oh, do I want to put points into pistols to get shotguns? I don't even know. What should I what should I focus on first? I put way more thought into obviously Shepard than anyone else. Advanced overkill. Do that for now. Um, you're already maxed out on that, so I'm going to give you advanced barrier. Garrus, my man. Okay, that's good to me. Inform Fidan. Hang on, we could check out here. Is there anything down here? save that person unfortunately okay I have like a feeling that we I might end up going down this way what do you think like part of me is just doing the whole eh, but there's still enemies here but then I'm like, eh, I don't know. Clear. Okay, it's a dead end and there's a water valve. This valve looks like part of a large system. There are likely others we need to activate as well. Oh, okay. Well, we've just completed part of a step early. Ferros, water restoration. Find more valves. You need to find more valves to restore water to the colony. Keep looking through the tunnels. Okay. There's another one. Doesn't look like it's been activated yet, though. We should keep looking. Okay. So there's one more here, and the panels look like that. Okay. So I guess we'll try and uh, try and keep an eye out for another another panel at some point. To activate, because there was only two that I could see in that room. But we'll head back to head back to those people, given the rundown. Say, did what you wanted. Took out those Geth boys. Certainly an in intriguing. Certainly an intriguing race. Elevator presently out of service. Hello, everybody. The tower's secure. Thanks to you, Commander. I just did what I had to. Well, I'm glad you're on our side, then. They may have been slowed, but they'll be back. They always come back. What do they want? If you want answers, go ask them yourselves. We don't know what they're after. They came, they attacked us, that's all we know. Their main base is at the Exogeny headquarters. A good place to start looking if you want answers. What's Exogeny? It's the company most of us work for before the attacks. They fund this colony. The Skyway leads directly to Exogeny headquarters. You can't miss it. Of course, there's an army of Geth between here and there. 
I didn't expect this would be easy. Then maybe I can get this colony operational again. What can you tell me about the defenses the Geth have set up? I don't have any details, but I'll wager it's a lot more fortified than the command post. They landed at least one Geth ship at Exogeny, and I've seen large walking tanks on the Skyway. Expect a hard fight. What do you need done to get this place back on its feet? We need those Geth destroyed. Arcelia's right. There are still Geth in the tunnels. We also have more mundane problems like food, water, and power. I'm not sure where we stand on those matters. You should talk to the people overseeing them. Is there anything I can do to solve your water shortage? Maka Doyle has been assigned to that particular issue. If you have any insight to offer, please speak with her. What's wrong with the colony's power supply? May O'Connell is working on our power problems. She'd know more about it than I do. You mentioned something about a food shortage. Davin Reynolds is tasked with securing food for the immediate future. If you can assist, please speak with him. Do you have information about Geth in the lower tunnels? Nothing new. They're in the tunnel somewhere, likely guarding a transmitter to coordinate attacks. It's not a critical threat right now, but getting rid of that transmitter will help us defend against further attacks. Let's talk about Zeus, Hope, and Pharos in general. Of course, Commander. What do you need done to get this place back on? Nope. Those Geth Are, I'm not sure where we stand. I picked the guys. wrong thing. Let's talk, Let's talk about of Zeus, course, Hope. Commander. Tell me about your colony. Life is hard and often brutal even without our current problems. Colonial affairs back on Earth told us we'd be beneath the notice of any raiders. I guess they weren't counting on the Geth. But, despite everything, there's something tranquil about this place, unlike anything I've experienced before. How big was the original Pharos colony? We were nearly a thousand at the main site, 200 more at my outpost. When the first wave obliterated our defenses, we fell back to Zoo's Hope. I don't think they want to be evacuated, buddy. The Normandy isn't huge, but we could airlift you out. The Geth fighters are too dangerous, and I won't be driven off this world. Mm -hmm. It is our home. I didn't think they'd want to leave. There's a chance for growth here that's simply not available on other worlds. What else can you tell me about Exogeny? Exogeny funded this colony. Without them, we wouldn't be stuck here. They specialize in colonization. In return for bankrolling the colony, we work for them. Their main goal is the retrieval of valuable artifacts or resources. Except there isn't anything here. Or if there is, we didn't find it. I wonder if that's what the Geth are looking for. Perhaps. As she said, we never found anything of value. Of course, the Geth could know something we don't. I'll talk to you when I learn more. Good luck. All right, let's talk to our let's talk to our guys. You will have to forgive my wife. Kalantha's not in her right mind. She just needs to relax and accept what's happened. What happened to your wife? The constant attacks have strained us all. She'll adapt. We all have. Is there anything I can do for her? No, she just needs time. Time to absorb everything. We'll be fine. Do you have any idea what the Geth were looking for? Uh, I can't think of any reason for an attack like this. We just wanted to build a home. Do you know anything about this planet? Just what I was told by Colonial Affairs. It's a little different from what they claimed. It's not all bad, though. When the Geth are gone, we'll have a chance to create something even more spectacular than before. I have to go. Please do what you can to stop the attacks. All right, sir. Talk to Devin Reynolds. You're the one who repelled that last wave. They'll be back. And if the Geth don't kill us, we'll die of hunger soon enough. Are you doing anything to remedy the situation? I need to boost rations with Varen meat, but it's too dangerous. The Alpha Varen, he's huge and he's mad. Rabid, maybe. Totally uncontrollable. I can't do anything until he's dead. I have a ship. I could bring in supplies from off-world. I'd rather you concentrated on the Geth. Food won't help us if they breach our defenses. Okay, all right. Tell me about hunting Varen. Hunting them is impossible while fending off the Geth. <coughs> on the positive side, they'll attack anything. 
even those damn synthetics. The big Alpha Baron is the real problem. He's mad, erratic, completely unpredictable. All right. Seems like we need to just get rid of the Geth first, and then we can focus on their food, water, power shortages. I have to go. So long. After, Varan are omnivores with a preference for living prey. Originally native to the Krogan home world of Tuchanka, they are, like most life from Tuchanka, savage, clannish, and consummate survivors. They are pack hunters when vulnerable prey is readily available and become scavengers when outnumbered or outclassed. Their supreme adaptability, vicious demeanor, and rapid breeding cycle have made them ubiquitous and dangerous pests on many worlds. Virtually everywhere the Krogan have been, Varan infestations have followed, wreaking havoc with the native ecology. The Krogan have had a love-hate relationship with Varan for millennia, alternately fighting them for territory and embracing them as treasured companions. To this day, Krogan raise them as beasts of war, one of the common subgenus of Varan has metallic silver scales, leading to the rather unusual nickname, fish dogs. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, Varan are basically just Krogan's dogs. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right, we got Mayor Connell and Marshall Doyle as well. Nice work with those Geth. Glad you showed up. I still need the power cells for this generator, though. Would it help if I brought in some power cells from the Normandy? We can certainly spare them. The top of the line ship doesn't use the same parts as the old generator we've got. The cells just aren't compatible. Nothing that we can do with our ship is helping them. If I find anything while I'm looking around, I'll send it your way. Thank you, Commander. I appreciate it. I'm sorry, but I can't stop to talk. I have to deal with the water shortage. Is there anything I can do? The utilities building was one of the first to fall under Geth control. Find the mains and turn them back on. Until then, this colony is dry. Do it yourself. What do you know about this planet? I am not the one to ask about that. Ask Fi Dam or one of the others. All right. I already know flying water in is not going to yield a positive response. Um, so we have water restoration. We've got one more to find another valve. Geth in the tunnels. There's still Geth in the tunnels. Finding and destroying the Geth transmitter. Farron meat power cells. And then go to the Exogeny headquarters. Okay. Well, we've spoken to those guys. Uh, let's check the map. Plot point. So if I want to check the tunnels beneath Zoo's Hope. Just have to go downstairs and see see how we go. All right. This is still showing as a plot point. Commander, what can I do for you? I'll talk to you when I learn more. Good luck, Commander. Okay, the plot point is now no longer there. All right, let's move. I guess we're going this way. Is the elevator working now? Because it. Well, there's the Geth eyeballs again. Still hanging around for some reason. It's so weird. Alright, so elevator to the Prothean Skyway. And there's another elevator here. I think that's where. That's the, that's the Normandy. Okay. Stairs down to the tunnels. Elevator. Let's take this lift down. Okay, so it's only this it's only the Citadel uh, lifts that have dialogue. This, every other one's just a loading screen. Aha, my vehicle. My ship. And now to the Geth base. Not something an intelligent being would typically say. Boy, and there's the tanks, baby. Let's go. Any sign of movement? 
Ah! <laughs> I'm like, okay, fuck. You hit one piece of random terrain, you're like, whoop! You've been flipped! Don't mess with my Mako, baby. Where are the where are these other three dots? Are they above me? Or are they below me? Seems that they're above me. The arrows are pointing upwards. So check that out, though. It's me. We need to deal with the gap. Forget them. Nah. Come on, Garrus. Let's check in. Don't ignore them. Exo Jenny security. That's close enough. Relax, Jong. They're obviously gaff. <laughs> Get back, Juliana. Who are you? What do you want? Relax, Jong. Commander Shepard. I'm here to remove your geth problem. You see? You worry too much. And you trust too easily, Juliana. I'm just glad to see a friendly face. I thought we were the only humans left on this planet. Phi Dan and some of the members of Zoo's Hope are still alive. I thought you said they were all dead. I said they were probably all dead. They're surviving, but the Geth really hit them hard. We know what that's like. Those damn synthetics are relentless. Are we getting close to their base? You're almost there. They're holed up in the Exogeny headquarters, just a bit further down the Skyway. Those headquarters are private property, soldier. Remove the Geth and nothing else. God, this guy's an idiot. I'm not interested in your company's secrets. Commander, before you go, my daughter, Lisbeth, she's missing. They shouldn't waste time poking around. We could do a proper accounting of our casualties after the Geth are gone. Casualties? That's my daughter you're talking about. Yeah, what the She's fuck? Still alive. Oh I my know god. It. This dude's like, yeah, we can just do the casualties after you get back. Come on, man. Where's your daughter, Juliana? She was working in the Exogeny building when the attacks came. Oh, yeah, there were several places she could hide. For a short time. Why the fuck is he being like this? Where's your daughter, Juliana? Somewhere oh, at okay. the Exogeny headquarters, I hope. How did you get split up from the Zoo's Hope colony? Most of us live closer to the Exogeny building. Zoo's Hope was mostly used as a port. When the Geth hit, we scattered. Until you told us about the others, we assumed they were killed in the first wave. If we had known they were still alive, we might have attempted to join them. They're fairly secure now. Maybe you should do that. No, 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 no. I don't think that's a good idea. We, we have no vehicles, and the Skyway offers little protection. Like the building we're in now? <laughs> Listen, our best hope is to sit tight and wait for company reinforcements. We'll come eventually. Probably not. What was the building used for? Oh, yeah, we repurposed that structure to serve as headquarters for Exogeny. That's mostly offices with a number of uh, light-duty R&D labs. Exogeny is a master at repurposing anything and everything. The company has to make a profit somehow, Juliana. Pharos is a long way from self-sufficient. Do you know what the Geth are after? I have no idea. We certainly haven't found anything of use. Something Exogeny is keen to remind us of. We need to recoup our expenses. It's nothing personal. Tell me about the colony. We established ourselves here four years ago. Growth was steady until the attacks. Our biggest challenge has been the lack of resources. There's just so little here of value. Still, we were making a go of it. It was even starting to feel like home. What brought you here? I guess I thought this would be the start of a new life. I wanted to go where I could feel like I was making a difference. Instead, everything we built is destroyed. It's very hard not to lose hope. Stay bunkered down until I find out what the Geth are after. Dude, the 
the dialogue is so good uh, and the voice acting uh, really helps like the voice acting is nothing short of incredible um, and I love that nothing that I'm li- like hearing from the voice acting is like cringe or anything like it's it's all delivered like really really well I was hoping you'd have a moment to speak with me I've got a bit of a problem what do you need I need to retrieve some data it's not a big job but it pays well I'm listening good good Poking around in the ruins has become a bit too dangerous for me. People are quick to assume we enjoy being in hazardous situations. <laughs> it's not that. Yeah. All you need to do is find my console at Exogeny headquarters and drop the data onto this OSD. It's that simple. I'll look around if I get the chance. I appreciate it. That data could be worth a lot of money. Of course, this all depends on getting out of here alive. Time to get moving. Just keep in mind what I said. Yeah, buddy, that's all right. I got a daughter to find and I got data to download. I'll do it. We ride when the attack is. Good to know. All right, let's go. See, Garris, this is where we drop in. You don't wanna, you don't wanna rescue someone's daughter, Garris, huh? Huh? A little bit cold-hearted of you, sir. bunch of just like enemy symbols on the map but then there's just no enemies that I can see um, behind me at least oh they've boarded that's one of their ships I think right all right, another level up. Uh, let's have a look. Where do I want to put my points? Let's do Spectre Training. Uh, two Inspector Training, and then... Um, two in Fitness. Uh, Liara. Let's put your Singularity skill up. And Garrus. Hmm, yeah. Um, first aid, th yeah. Let's do that. Alright, the map's jammed. team. Alright, we're just dealing with our map being completely jammed in this area. Alright, we want to go this way. Easy decryption. Fusion containment cell. Which is that? This? I don't know what that is. It looks like a geth thing. In like standby mode. Oh shit! <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I was like, looks like a geth thing in standby mode. Fuck me. That's the last of them. Good to go. 
go. Exoskeleton. What was what's called the exoskeleton? I glimpsed it and I forgot. I just read exoskeleton went, yeah, yeah, that would be a, that would be an armor piece. It was not an armor piece. Okay, we got stuff going on down there. Hmm. Our weapons cannot touch a field like this. We'll need another way in. Oh, hang on. Just down here. A one-way trip down, Commander Shepard. All right, well, let's fucking go. We gotta do it. No, please, I want to go back. Oh, there we go. Damn it! The daughter. I'm so sorry. I thought you were Geth or one of those Baron. Who are you and what are you doing in here? It's my own fault. Everyone else was running and I stayed to back up data. Next thing I knew, the Geth ship latched on and the power went out. I was trapped. I, I tried to get out, but the way was blocked. We'll get you out as soon as we find out what the Geth are after. It's not the Geth. It's the energy field they put up. They don't want anyone else getting access to the... I'm here for the Geth. <laughs> It's very important that I find out what they're after. I don't know for certain, but I'm guessing they're here for the Thorian. Thorian? I have never heard of such a thing. It's an indigenous life form. Exogeny was studying it. What else can you tell me? Do you know where I can find this Thorian? I... I might be able to, but not with those geth crawling around everywhere. Look, we need to get out of here, past that field. Any suggestions? No, not exactly. But I think the Geth ship is powering it. I've noticed the Geth laying power cables everywhere. You could follow those cables, but there's Geth all over the place. Tell me about yourself. I'm just a research assistant for Exogeny. I came here with my mother. I don't even know if she made it out alive. She's with some others from the colony. She's safe for now. She's alive? Oh, thank God. I thought I was the only one left. Please, Commander, just... Get that field down so I can see my mother again. Tell me what you know about the Thorian. I really don't know that much about it. I think it's some kind of plant being. I know it's very old. Thousands of years even. Okay. Why do you think the Geth would be interested in the Thorian? It's just a plant. I don't know why the Geth would care. Exogeny was studying it, but I don't think they found anything special. You stay put. I'll go open some doors. Oh, here, take my ID. This should get you past any locked doors. Good luck with that field. Thanks, Elizabeth. Oh, and... Baron! Well, if we, if we need to get some food, we can do that when we take out the Alpha one. Alright, Elizabeth, just don't get killed. You good? Just don't, just don't get killed, okay? You chill out. We're dropping down. Any abilities that increase my uh, my stamina, so I can sprint for longer? Stupid machine! Access encrypted files. Krogan Commander, huh? No, I don't want to review protocol. So would this be another Krogan working with Saren like that last one was when we rescued Liara? I am unable to comply. Please contact your supervisor. Damn it! Tell me what I want or I'll blast your virtual ass into actual dust! Please contact your supervisor for a level 4 security exemption or make an appointment with- STUPID MACHINE! If there is nothing else, please step aside. There is a queue forming behind- <laughs> He just gave us up! That's... oh my god. Ah! Liara! Cold-blooded. 
Yes. Exogeny Corporation reminds all staff that the discharging of weapons while on company property is strictly forbidden. Welcome back, research assistant Elizabeth Bainham. What can I do for you? Oh yeah, my ID. That's so funny. <laughs> Straight up murders the dude. Freezes him and then just murders him. It's like, there's a queue forming behind you. <laughs> it's like... What information was the last user attempting to access? Fetching data. The previous user was attempting to access details on the study of subject species 37, the Thorian. Tell me everything you told the Krogan. I was unable to provide the previous user with any relevant data. Aside from lacking proper access, there has been no new data available on species 37. All sensors monitoring the observation post at Zoo's Hope have been enacted for several cycles. What does Zoo's Hope have to do with the Thorian? Species 37 is located <gasps> in the substructure of the Zoo's Hope outpost. Tell me everything you know about the Thorian. The Thorian is a simple plant life form that exhibits a sentient behavior uncommon with other flora. Through dispersion and the eventual inhalation of spores, it can affect and control other organisms, including humans. The Zoo's Hope Control Group has yielded interesting results. Before sensors went offline, almost 85% of all test subjects were infected. Are you saying Exogeny knew its people were getting infected? It was deemed necessary to assess the true potential of Species 37. <sighs> that explains their strange behavior. You should contact Joker. Joker! Come in, Joker! Damn it! That field's blocking us. We must find a way around the field. We must get back to Zoo's Hope. VI, what can you tell me about the Geth ship and the field it's generating? I have limited data on the Geth. They have effectively blocked all sensors within the facility. I have detected unusual power fluctuations, but am unable to determine the source. I want to know about Exogeny Corporation. Exogeny Corporation is at the forefront of human expansion in the new galactic economy, funding colonial development and securing resource rights to ensure our progress as a species. Further inquiries regarding company policy may be directed to consumer information services during regular business hours. Who's in charge here? Who organized the research? All decisions about local resource analysis and acquisition are made by on-site management deferring to the board of directors only when seasonal quotas are missed or exceeded. Individual employee records are confidential. Please access my personal files. Elizabeth Bainham, Research Assistant, Biomedical Division, Security Level 4 Exemption. You are currently under probation due to disagreements with management over established company policy. These sanctions may be lifted if your next evaluation is more agreeable. Mm. What triggered the probation? You were marked as combative about the operations of the Zoo's Hope project, specifically regarding the handling of the infected colonists. Mm. As a result, you were tasked with monitoring the safety of the colonists for the duration of the observation. She's one of the good ones. Please access Elizabeth my... Bainham, you are currently under probation due to disagreements with management. Oh, okay. I want to know about Exogeny Corp. I pressed the wrong thing. Company policy may be directed to Tell me about the Thorian. <laughs> Just kind of Species 37 was discovered several weeks ago when a small team was infected with spores while examining ruins near the Zoo's Hope outpost. The outpost was quarantined immediately and study of the infection began. Within 21 days, 58% of colonists exhibited altered behavior. Within 28 days, 85%. What's the size of this thing? The Thorian appears to be a diffused creature. Its cognitive abilities are centered in large nerve bundles, but it receives data from kilometers of meandering tendrils. We have discovered bundles approximately one meter in diameter, but these seem insufficient to coordinate the massive sensory potential it possesses. It may simply process such stimulation slowly, or perhaps there is a nerve cluster of a greater magnitude we have not yet encountered. Is it intelligent? Can I reason with it? The Thorian does not exhibit the focused behavior of a predator. The release of spores is an act of survival, not aggression. It does trigger advanced behaviors in the humans it enslaves, but we have yet to discover whether it recognizes or is capable of recognizing humans as more than tools. It is sufficiently alien as to defy classification at this time. Interesting. 
Do you know how the creature controls its slaves? The will subversion manifests as intense pain if directives are ignored. The effect is severe enough that subjects are soon conditioned against even minor thoughts of rebellion. Observation suggests the Thorian views its thralls in a utilitarian way. Care is apparently taken to avoid injuring them, much as a craftsman avoids damaging his tools. As long as no action is taken against the creature's objectives, the subjects are free to pantomime a normal existence until specifically tasked with something. That's wild. Where's the center of this thing? The Thorian is present as a weave of tendrils across much of the lower surface of Ferris. Observation of enslaved subjects suggests there may be key clusters that are tended by thralls. Unfortunately, direct observation of species 37 is limited or non-existent. All right, we need to get out of here. That's enough for now. Going to standby mode. This was a research facility, a place of learning and knowledge. It should not have become a slaughterhouse. We're not going to find many survivors in this place. All right, well, let's work on getting out of here. Still need to try and get that dude's personal files to put on the OSD. What the hell? Heads up! Oh, he died. <laughs> he just took a moment. The Geth must have anchored their ship to the side of the building with these claws. Indelicate, perhaps, but very efficient. How do we cut the power if it's coming from the ship? Could the ship be dislodged? Maybe there's a flaw in one of the other claws we could exploit. This structure seems to have significance for the Geth. Is it possible they set up this room to serve as a sacred temple of sorts? Why would a synthetic devote resources to something like this? This structure seems to have significance for the Geth. Mm. Is it possible they set up this room to serve as a sacred temple of sorts? Lancer number five. Nah. Firestorm number five, however. Maybe, yeah. Need to do some proper upgrades for everybody soon. Why would a synthetic devote resources to something like this? See, I can approach it, but she just significance for the Geth. Says. The guest ship claws are too large to save with conventional weapons. Find the guest ship's primary claw and figure out a way to destroy it. Okay. Their primary claw. Well, we're kind of... We're kind of stuck in this one spot, right? Oh, there we go. Bruh. Cute. Alright. Let's go looking. Bag of attack. Oh, Krogans. Okay. 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 Chill out, everybody. Jesus Christ. Hey, pushy. Just what you'd expect from the Krogan. Just heads first. Straight in. Ah, uh, Gavin Hossel's console. download that data baby nice all right we've secured data just like we were I asked to okay let's 
good. So we've got that dude starter that we can give back to him, and there was another direction to go in, which was down here. When you're being jammed, you know they're nearby. I love that they're like the people that were like, oh yeah, when you go to the exogeny stuff, don't get any information, we don't care about it, but then we it's like they're just trying to protect themselves because we're gonna find out that they're willingly, you know, Zoo's Hope have been, you know, unwilling test subjects. The test samples were due to arrive three days ago, but we haven't heard anything from the colony or the cargo vessel. We suspect the samples became volatile and recommend cutting off all further contact with the Nodocrack colony. Even if the colony is discovered, no one should be able to trace the events there back to us. Uh, Exogeny seem kind of evil to me. Hmm, is this, uh, is this, this seems like geth shit because it's so different to the rest of it. And is this the primary claw? Looks like it. Now is not the time. Why? Okay. So we came in the eye oh yeah, up the stairs. There we go. Up the stairs. Up the stairs. I fear we do not have the needed gear to destroy this claw. We will have to keep looking. Yeah. Oh, the game's about to tell us where to go. Oh, there's a big boy. There's a geth big boy. Give me that codex entry about it. Ships and vehicles. Frigates. Geths. Fucking yeah. Geth Destroyer, yep, big boy, gotcha. Hey, Ooh, hard decryption? Let's go. Oh, I pressed X instead of Y. Hold on. Try that again. Geth Invasion. According to data retrieved from this console, the Geth are preparing for a major offensive in Citadel space. If this information is accurate, they're amassing a significant force somewhere in the Armstrong Nebula. So in the journal, Geth Activities. Files from an encrypted Geth terminal indicate that the Geth may be amassing a large fighting force in the Armstrong Cluster. If true, this could be a precursor to a full-on war with the Geth. Alright, let's go investigate the cluster on our own. That'd be fine. Just just the Normandy. That'd be chill. We'll just take on the, all of the Geth forces. No worries, dude. More heavy armor for the Krogan. Good that we have Garrus with his decryption skills because we've got so much. Private log of Dr. Gamole. I don't trust this Cerberus group. 
They may pay us well, but if this start gets out before we've developed an antidote, it's just not smart. They won't tell us uh, what they want the samples for or why they wanted them delivered to the Mano uh, Matano system. My records show nothing of interest out there. Cerberus group are also um, attached. See, doing the Cerberus stuff first, doing the Cerberus stuff first allows us to actually know what the hell that means. You find a repair ticket attached to this console. The damn door to the shuttle bay is fried again. Works fine if the PSI is 30 or lower, but the safety shutoff kicks in if the PSI gets above 34. But if the PSI is in the 31 to 34 zone, the door slams down with enough power to shear through a metal eye beam. Somebody fix this before one of my team loses an arm in that thing. Aha. So we're going to tear the arm off. Cool. So, 13, 11, 24, I think I picked the wrong one, hold on, there we go, oh no wait, hang on, that's emergency shutdown, right? Um, I can't read the, does the note get added to the... You can't read that note again, but I think it was like, was it keep it between 31 and 34? That makes 12, that makes 39. 29. Oh, hang on. So that'll be 28. That works, right? Yeah. Cool. Remove it, baby. Bye bye. Well done. Our way out should be clear now. We can go address this Thorian issue. Keep awesome. your guard up. There still might be a few Geth inside the base. I repeat, Normandy to shore party. Are you reading? Anyone there? Normandy to shore party. Come on, Commander. Talk to me. Is that you, Joker? What's going on over there? We're in lockdown here, Commander. Something happened to the colonists. They're banging on the hull, trying to claw their way inside the ship. They're freaking out. No, they've all been turned into there. Is that the this the Thorian stuff? They can't do any real damage. We're on our way back. Just hold your position. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we'll just wait right here for you, Commander. This place will be crawling with Geth in a minute. Keep together, and we'll get out of here in one piece. Cool. All right, we've removed the primary uh, Geth ship. Uh, so we can now get out of here and find out what's going on with this with these Thorian related matters. But guys, I'm going to end this episode here. So we'll continue on with our uh, mission through Ferros next time. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Um, again, seeing how things go, uh, this ep the episodes might stay around this length. Uh, they might get a little bit shorter. I don't think they would get longer. Uh, we'll just have to see how we go. It's just like I'm having a great time playing these games. Um, uh, playing this game, but I should say this series that we've just started uh, having a great time so far really enjoying taking everything in uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, I hope you enjoyed the adventure so far, and I'm excited to see uh, what will happen next again Thank you so much guys for watching, and I'll see you next time